your new life is going to cost you your old one. As we grow up, as we go about self-improvement, there's going to be constant moments of change, constant moments of realization where we need to be like, okay, I need to change. I need to get better. But with change, what comes with that? What is the cost of creating a new life for yourself that doesn't involve your old one? I went through a period like 10 months into my self-improvement journey when I quit this business model that I was doing. I was doing affiliate marketing. And towards the end of those 10 months, I was like halfway in it, halfway not. I was doing it little by little. But then in the back of my mind, I'm just like, why am I doing this? What am I doing? This person I am, it's just, this isn't who I want to be anymore. And it started, that, that feeling in my mind started to make me sad. It started to make me feel like uncomfortable to have to, the past 10 months was pretty much for nothing. The only thing that came out of those 10 months was the person that I am now, that I was after the 10 months. During the period after those 10 months, I was just on my phone. I was like indulging like animes. I was like just binging YouTube, trying to find I was trying to put off my purpose. I was trying to put off that feeling of uncomfortableness, knowing that it's like, I'm about to step into the unknown. I'm about to do something that I don't even know what I'm about to do. I'm about to become a new person. I'm about to do things that I didn't even expect to do because I was all about entrepreneurship, all about money, all about, yeah, like make money online, like uh, business, selling, whatever. After I realized it's like, that is not really the path I'm supposed to be on. I had to get rid of that person who I was you had to get rid of that entrepreneurship side. I had to get rid of that person who was always penny pinching, who was always so obsessed with money. And it's crazy to think I was so obsessed with money, but I was broke the whole time. As humans, we are designed to cope and self-sabotage. The reason that you probably self-sabotage yourself is because you're trying to protect yourself from feeling those uncomfortable feelings because humans are not meant to be happy we are meant to be comfortable. It's human nature to want to stick close to where we are and not change. That's why when we instill new habits and we instill new routines and we want to do things differently, that's why it's so difficult because our comfort zone, whenever we try to edge the comfort zone and try to get out of it, our, we self-sabotage ourselves unconsciously. That's the thing. It's like, it's unconscious the way that we like self-sabotage ourselves. We don't do it on purpose. Actually, we do do it on purpose, but we don't know that we do it on purpose. And if you ever felt this feeling of, okay, like I wanna get better, but then you get distracted by overindulgences and the stimulation, you try to mask the pain and the uncomfortableness of wanting to change and wanting to get better because you know it, it's gonna cost you. It's gonna cost you feeling uncomfortable. It's gonna cost you your old life pretty much. But that constant feeling of, okay, feeling guilty for indulging and distracting yourself all this time, what does it lead to? This constant cycle leads to breakdowns. That's why we have moments of, okay, like I'm so sick of this, I'm so sick of living this life, like I just wanna get better, but I'm not doing anything about it. It's like you feel shame, you feel guilt about yourself. And trust me, like I've been there so many times on my floor, looking at myself in the mirror, like so disgusted with myself. Why would you even do this to yourself? I look at myself in the mirror and just be so disappointed. And times like that, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, oh, always feel good about yourself because life's not about feeling good. It's not really about that. It's about experiencing, it's about growing, it's about evolving. And so it's okay to have moments of shame and guilt and these negative emotions because with those negative emotions, with that constant down spiral of a breakdown, that is where you will build your new life. These breaking points that we have over time, it's life just giving us like small jabs, small like stabs. It doesn't really feel like much, but over time, those small jabs, those small stabs at us and at our soul creates this breakdown. It's almost like, let's imagine our soul as like crystallized circle, as, as like energy in it. What happens is life takes stabs at it. It cracks it open and starts leaking out. And then the next day it stabs it again and starts leaking out. And all of a sudden, your soul has been like tampered with and has been stabbed so many times and no wonder you feel empty, you feel like you need to change and you feel this like breakdown. How to successfully go through a breakdown is the next thing. It's a feeling those emotions and not masking it again because what happens is when you're trying to change, you don't, like you need to feel these like emotions. You need to feel through them instead of masking them and going on your phone or getting your mind away from it. That is the reason that you're probably not changing is because 
you just keep distracting yourself from that breaking point. For example, the most guilt that I would feel that led me to so many breakdowns was relapsing over and over and over. Whenever I'd watch porn, whenever I'd jerk off, like the moment moment after the post nut clarity would totally like give me a wave of shame and guilt. And I'd sit there on my bed almost like in tears after, immediately after in tears, like, why am I doing this to myself? This self-sabotage that I'm doing to myself is a way to protect me, but it's not protecting me. It's only leaving me empty. It's only leaving me to feel shame and guilt and these negative emotions. And with that, every time that I would have a breakdown after a relapse, I'd have a period of good emotions. I'd have a period of changing and doing different things. I've had these spirals, these like constant breakdowns of wanting to change so many times. And what that is, is here's how I think about it. Self-improvement isn't about the results. It's not about the what you get out of it, the external results. It's about the character that you become that comes out of it. So when you die in your deathbed, you're proud of the person that you became. It's not about the external things. It's not about the money you made. Who gives a fuck about the money? It's about the person that you came out of that you did for people and that you gave to everyone. And so what happens is these breakdowns, these down spirals of negative emotions, it's pretty much cracking down our current self and chipping away at that person and creating a new. It's these breakdowns allow us to slice off the bad parts of ourselves that are bringing us down, weighing us down and holding us down from reaching our potential. So the cost of wanting to change in your new life is these negative emotions. It's these uncomfortable situations that you're in. It's okay to get pissed off and angry. Getting pissed off and angry at yourself for not living up to your potential is a good thing because that means you still have respect for yourself. That means you still love yourself enough to want to change and to want to get better. If you didn't feel guilt, if you didn't feel anything after you constantly self-sabotage yourself, then that just means you don't love yourself enough. After rock bottom then turns into self-actualization, which then turns into your new life, which turns into growth and change. And after you hit rock bottom, we, we go down and then this, this like you feel like you you can't get any worse than this, right? After these rock bottoms, after these periods of just guilt and shame and these negative emotions, the only way to go from there is to go up. And that's when you'll change. That's when you'll do things differently because the person who you were before doesn't matter anymore. You can get rid of him. You don't have to be him anymore. You don't have to be that person. Don't allow yourself to stick to this person that you are because you can always change. You can be whoever you want. Don't let society tell you that, oh, like, just love yourself. It's okay to be yourself. Like, you, yourself is whoever you want to be. If you are depressed and you feel negative about yourself, if you feel shame and guilt about the actions that you're taking, it's because you need to change the character that you are. And the cost of that is your old life, is to sacrifice that old person who was doing those bad habits, who was doing those bad things, who was doing those things that was hurting himself. And so with that, grow from that. And now knowing this, I want you to, whenever you feel a down spiral of negative emotions and you're about to like crack and you're about to just feel those emotions out, ride them out, and then once you realize that it's all over, realize that the only way to go from there is to go up and start getting better. It can't get any much worse than this, so you might as well get up and just like start thinking about the person who you actually want to be, regroup, and then keep moving forward. You see, in this video, I never told you to stop doing what you're doing. I told you to ride out these emotions, ride the wave of life, because we keep moving forward. We have to keep moving forward in order to evolve, whether that be negative emotions or positive emotions. We have to ride both of them because that's the means of evolving and getting better. And so with that, continue your journey and keep moving forward.